All right. Third camp in three weeks. And we're back where it all started, eh, Dave? Right, yeah, this is where it all began. Out with me dad. The over the hill wild camper. Eh? Dave. Anyway, so this is where we uh, did our first wild camp in the right, Heath Pool in the College Valley. So it's uh, 20 to 4 on Saturday. What's the date? 15th, isn't it? Saturday, the 15th of April. And it's splitting the pavements, it's that hot. It's 12 degrees. Back in the shorts. Dave, who normally you kind of get him out of his shorts, he's opted for trousers. Anyway, I'm not going to waffle on too much. We're, we're going to head up towards Hen Hole for a wild camp. So, so a bit of a flat walk and then a slow climb up to the Hen Hole. We'll have some nice bait, nice chilled night. See you there. So we've done a uh, four mile, it's a bit of a road walk for the first three and then it gets a little bit more soft on the feet and we're probably about, um, I don't know, maybe a mile and a half away from the hen hole. Right, so we've got here, that was what, about five, what was it, five pounds? Five and a half. Five and a half mile. And behind us is the three sisters of the hen hole. Pretty cool, eh? And even better, if it would have here, we've got it to ourselves. Yeah, we've got it to here. And we've jumped the stream without getting wet. Yep. 71. <laughs> I nearly dropped the camera in the water line. Aye, I was, I was like that. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to pitch the tent, it's a bit, a bit early like, have a cup of tea, we'll, we'll pitch the tent in a bit, have a cup of coffee, and then we've got a steak for dinner. Right, so we pitched as you've just seen, but I had to re-pitch because uh, it, it was just too sloping. So pretty skilled, I like. Without totally taking it down, I just shifted it along. Tony Hobbs would be proud. <laughs> so I'm in the trail star, because I know it's, well, it's not forecast to rain, so I haven't got a bathtub floor, so I've risked it, but uh, it's almost like a shelf, so I think it's not too bad considering the very uneven ground. Bit of a flappy edge here, pitched very high, so I shouldn't get any condensation. I'll just show you inside to show you what I mean. So, so we've got like the bed on that level and then a total different level down here, so not too bad. Anyway, I've checked my bed is flat. Then my dad's in the Taji 2 from 3FLU gear which is pretty much inherited from me it's a bit of a weakling tent I had a bit of a bend in some of the poles so some of them got replaced but it's loads loads of room inside 
so Dave's made a coffee. So I think I'll start the uh on, on me jet boil coffee off. Time is it? Seven nearly seven o'clock. So it'll not be long before we have to get the trangia lit up for ribeye sauteed potatoes. We've had this before guys the old torn haven't we? Well, I've had me tea in worse places than you, dear. Mm -hmm. So we haven't we haven't got like a natural sort of stone kitchen. So we're we're just taking shelter behind Dave's tent on the seat sit mats. So we've got the tranger on. We're boiling the kettle just for some to do the washing up. So we've got some tin potatoes. We're going to fry one red onion, some mushrooms, pancetta. And then a ribeye steak from the farm shop. Got the pork, pork scratching starter. Dave's on the. What is it? How strong is it? Seven point four percent New England DIPA. I'm not sure what the D stands for. On the strong little lager. Little little, little, little lager. Best. I'm on the, the fake beer. Two pound forty a can. We've got a very very nice setting here. It's got a stream running past us but we've brought our ear plug so we will get some sleep so anyway I think the kettle's boiled so it'll not be long I'll be starting the frying process and I, um, I'll try and film bits of it okay right so the first step is sorting the tin potatoes and you can't whack tin potatoes for this to be honest so there's some olive oil we'll do them in two batches so I've done about half Probably a bit over half in the first, first batch. The pancetta's in. Now I'm introducing the onions. So it is. Have we mentioned it yet? Would you be referring to my... Well, I, I, and I don't like to go on about it, to be honest, Dave. It had crossed my mind. My NVQ level one in professional cooking yeah. from Gateshead mm -hmm. College uh, when I did a night class. Yeah, it's nice to mention it though, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I think people might get sick of me going on about that. So I don't like to mention. I don't like to talk about these things. <laughs> I think it intimidates other people. You don't mm -hmm. have to be as good as me to be doing this sort of stuff, you know. Bit of salt in the onions that brings the water out. We'll bring you back when they look a bit more appetising. Right, we've done the onions and the pancetta. They've gone in a pan to stay warm. Now we're doing the mushrooms, which might be a bit overkill because we've got loads of food here. Right, so we've took the mushrooms off, put them in with the onions, and now it's the, uh, the ribeye. So let's get this going. Loads of salt. We'll bring you back when we flip it. Right, everything's done, but we had some um, supplementary black pudding. I'm not sure where it fits in this meal, <laughs> but I'm not going to refuse it because it looks nice. So the ribeye is buried under onions and asparagus, and we've got some tin potatoes. That's mine. Looks like a bit of a dog's dinner, but it, it, it's going to taste very, very good. And that'll just be the icing on the cake. Anyway, Dave, do you want to try it? Lovely. Yeah. Nice. Right, we're going to enjoy this, and I'll maybe bring you back when I'm going to go to bed. Right, speak soon. Right, so we've had our dinner. Very nice, very nice indeed. It's only nine o'clock, but uh sat out in that wind it is much colder than you'd expect save me breath so anyway I've retired to our tents um, so I'm in the trail star it's the second time I've used it like I said I don't have like a bathtub floor so I've just used me uh, like a DCF duomid floor I use um, really awkward pitch but I think I've done remarkably well to be honest it's a bit it's a bit flappy, but all I think all DCF trail stars are. Anyway, I'll not waffle on about the tent. Um, so I'm gonna 
hopefully get a bit of an early night's sleep and then get up uh, and then have a, a leisurely breakfast I think so I, I normally forget something when I come camping and uh, obviously when you go camping with a, a, a tent that requires walking poles or a trail star which needs two walking poles really uh, it's pretty essential that you bring walking poles but um, I forgot mine so these are actually my dad's unbelievable eh but that's all I forgot so that's good anyway had a great day brilliant weather amazing pitch just next to the three sisters so I'll bid you night god bless night night morning well I think I slept well, not too bad. I had a couple of spells of being awake for quite a while. I said I'd only forgot my uh, walking boots. Well, I hadn't. I forgot. I also forgot my ensuite toilet, my old empty milk bottle. So I did have to get up and knife for a, a wee. Anyway, it's nice and warm though. I'm going to have to get up now and have a wee anyway, so. See if Dave's kicking about, and then we'll uh, we'll get the kettle on. Right, see you in a bit. Right, that's it, we're all packed up. So that was the hen hole. Really nice time. As always, flat grass, otherwise we've left no trace. Dave's all packed up. Well, enjoyed that, did you, Dad? Yes, good. Good night, good uh, day out yesterday. Nice steady walk back now. And uh, we had a... Uh, a bank was we'll fit for a king we'll last night. Going, yes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. So, I'll see you next time. <laughs>